Congratulations, we finally passed a threshold. We're at a threshold where our code is complex enough that a new issue is going to arise. As our code gains more and more momentum, well, more conditions, loops, if statements, uh, left and right inputs, outputs, all the variations that our user could do or interact with and we supply it, our code base is, will grow and get harder to read. Which leads us to our first problem, which is code readability. And worst at all is we're going to work with teammates and they have to be able to read our code as well, just as much as we have to read their code. It's not a single man or single woman or anything. It's not a single person's code base anymore. It's many team members together creating something functional and useful. So the problem comes out is when someone does something that makes it harder to read. Well, before we talk about code, let's talk about when we're driving. You notice that we're following all a convention based on our country, where it tells us when you're driving, you should always be on the right side of the road. And why is this? Well, because if you were on the left side and another guy is coming directly at you, well, you guys will collide. Right, And if you collide, we have an issue. The same thing goes with anything else. We put these rules in place so we have less issue that happens. We have more reasonable, let's say, more reasonable, in this case it's a road and all that, but more reasonable code. And we could understand what's going on with a general sense of understanding from all the other stuff we've learned. Okay? So, if we write anything we want in our code base our code is going to be less and less readable and you're going to see you're going to come back to this code many many times over the many many years right now our code is simple but as it gets complex we need to make sure it's good so to make this work there's normally conventions that would happen now if you're at a company that convention will be given to you a uh, great example of this is if you were working at Google or let's say over here, if you were working at Google, they would give you this convention that you need to follow when you're writing code. And pretty much almost pretty much all companies, uh, if their code base is big enough and if they want something that works and they could come back to it, they make a convention, a guide for you to follow when you code. There happens to be a weird and really bad saying, make your code so hard to read that they could never fire you. Well, to be honest, that's completely wrong because you're working in a teammate. If your code is not readable, well, they should have fired you from the day one because your teammates won't be able to adjust, manipulate, or do anything to your code, right? We want to make our code really cleanable. So the first goal that we're going to give ourselves is by following this convention, our first code, our first goal, so let me write this down, our first goal, and you're going to see, we're going to have a few more goals, and these are really important. They're going to be what determines if you're part of getting hired or not. And the first one is clean code. And this clean code, we're going to come back to it many, 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 many times. So how can we do this clean code right now when we don't have any real convention to follow? We're not part of a company yet. Well, right now with Java, which is owned by Oracle, they have their own standards and convention that they want you to utilize. This is something that over the many years have became a norm to make sure our code makes sense. Okay. I'm going to go through Oops, I'm going to go through most of these conventions, not all of them, and we're not going to go and read all of this at this level. But there's a few things we need to make sure works for us. Okay, so there's a few um, convention ways of writing names. Okay, so naming our variables or naming our class. There's three of them that I'm going to list, and I would like it that you kind of get familiarized with it and utilize it over the course of this, um, this course, basically. Um, 
so there's a, a few of them and uh, let's get let's get started it's gonna make more sense the first one is the camel case and the camel case goes in the, the form where the first word so this is the first word the first letter is lowercase but every sub subsequent words they're going to have a capital letter as a word why would we utilize this well it would make our variables more readable as an example if we create let's say end for whatever reason if we create end camel this makes perfectly uh sense by what it is okay well it's not a good name because an integer representing camel is this the quantity of camels or what so we want to go a bit deeper make it a better name so let's say camel um camel quantity and sometimes people shorten this out to qty which is a big standard so this is fine but normally you you kind of don't want to use any acronyms if possible so here we have the camel quantity and we could go a bit more specific we could say in egypt and we could say that value is five right and this variable is very descriptive and that's what we're aiming for that's one thing we need to do in our clean code but to make this variable this descriptive we need to be able to be able to read this variable and if we add it space well that doesn't work this is not how it functions the code cannot understand this the the compiler will crash the moment it sees the space because then it's expecting the next thing which is an equal sign right so we can't have spaces so what we need to do is to make our one word or sorry one variable name into many words but we see the difference because of the capital if we would have created the same variable but without any any let's say again five without any capitalization we'll notice that we're going to have a difficult times difficult time to read that word we want to make this reading faster so this comes in as the camel case the first word is lowercase and any subsequent words will be uppercase right only the first letter so you could see here this is a bit harder to read and the worst comes in when we could find words inside another word so in this case not really but most of the times we could find words inside of another word uh, i should probably let's do a quick google so here's an example like we have funeral in this case there's a possibility that is it fun real or is it funeral did i spell funeral correctly Fu -ne oh, i can't spell correctly here we go so is it fun eral i don't know what eral would be it could be someone created an acronym and we didn't know or is it actually funeral but if it was funeral the equal three doesn't make sense again not the greatest examples we want to try and avoid uh, acronyms as much as possible and we want to make sure that our variable names are really descriptive and we could only do this if we utilize this thing called camel case later on i'm going to present you with other ones such as pascal case and snake case and i'm going to tell you when to utilize it but first for from now on we know our first goal which is to have clean code and to be able to do this clean code we're going to avoid acronyms we're going to give our variable names descriptive names we're going to ensure that our code spacing is perfect if we have problems with our spacing spacing which is automatically adjusted by your id we could format our code by pressing alt press control plus l okay press these two keys hold down alt and control and press l uh, as an example if our code looks like this this makes it harder to read as it gets bigger so if i hold down control alt and l the ide should fix that for us you could see over here it adjusted and it adjusted over here okay this is important for us to have clean code again first goal you're going to see we're going to add more goals here but this is probably the most important and something you're going to struggle until you're late of the careers all right 
see you guys in the next videos